Today, we're going to run a fun experiment. We're going to bust out the original Windows NT 4.0 Task Manager, a piece of software that I wrote almost 30 years ago, and pit it against a scenario I never dreamed possible back in the day. Running the original under Windows 11 Pro on a 32-core Threadripper with 128 gigabytes of memory. Will it choke? Can the old Task Manager kill the new Task Manager? Find out right now, right here in Dave's Garage. Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I'm Dave Plummer, a retired operating systems engineer from Microsoft, going back to the MS-DOS and Windows 95 days. And as you likely know by now, if you're a fan of the channel, I'm the original author of the Windows Task Manager. Back in 1994, when I first wrote it, I did so on a single core 486. Then I moved to a dual processor MIPSR 4000, which allowed me to validate that it at least handled multiple CPUs. But the biggest machine that existed at the time, in the world as far as I know, for the uh, Windows NT architecture anyway, was a four processor Alpha AXP down in the Windows NT build lab. And of course I did test it there, and while I certainly never envisioned processors with up to 128 cores, I knew that core counts would grow. So I picked eight cores as a lofty target, and I wrote to that. Since NT itself only supported four max, it seemed a pretty safe bet for a while at least. In other words, the graphs should, in theory, work perfectly for up to eight CPUs going forward into the future. And even though there was no real way to test that, I simulated it by writing code to pretend that I had more cores than I actually did. I think I tested all the way up to eight, but I actually coded it to handle an arbitrary number of CPUs. You'd still only get eight graphs maximum, but if you had 16 cores in your far-off dystopian future, then the graphs from every two cores would be combined into one and so on. At least that was the theory back then. Let's check it out in practice today. We'll mount my original NT4 CD and expand the files that we need to run the original and then launch it under Windows 11 and see what happens. So here we are on Windows 11 Pro. First thing we'll do is open up a command window and we'll run it as administrator. So we'll grant that permission. And next we'll go to the D drive, which is the CD image for NT4 itself. We'll make a directory called NT4 on our hard drive and we'll go into the I386 folder of the CD. And here we can see all the files that come as System32 files. I don't care about the help files, so we only need a single file, taskmanager.exe. We'll expand that, and we'll put it into the NT4 folder that we created for ourselves, and now it's expanded into that folder. If we go into the NT4 folder, we should find the file in there. I love that it expands to 84K, and it still runs. Task page works, and so does the process page. If we go to the Performance tab, we'll see that all the graphs for the eight CPUs that are currently installed in the system work. Everything resizes properly. And as far as I can tell, the only thing that's not working properly is the memory usage display does not have enough digits to display the current memory usage. Note that all of these statistics like physical and commit charge and kernel memory all work accurately because they were all written 64 bits right from day one. Everything still seems to size correctly and as far as I can tell, if we grab the corner and drag it down, everything still works. The graphs get smaller. We can close that. Let's bring this up here and expand it to the window height. And now that we know that it works well with eight cores, it's time to throw all the cores at it and see what happens. Well, I'm actually pretty pleased with that. It handled the eight CPUs that I envisioned it working for properly, and the stats were all still correct as well. By and large, I think it's safe to say that the original NT4 Task Manager still runs pretty well on Windows 11. One way it was not quite forward-looking enough was in the LED-style seven-segment displays that I used for the memory and CPU bar graphs. The memory display simply doesn't have enough digits to display all of the free memory on the modern system without scaling the graph down to megabytes or gigabytes, which it couldn't do. Since it does it in kilobytes, it overflows the drawing area. And now it's time to put it to the real test, the one for which it was never prepared, 32 cores. We'll tweak the VM to reveal all of the system's raw cores and then see how the NT4 Task Manager copes with it. To get started, let's modify the VM. Okay, to increase the number of cores, we'll go into the hardware section here for processors and we'll change 8 to 64. Then we'll say OK and see what happens when we start the VM. We'll click Start, and right away, unfortunately, I see a red bar, which means it did not start. Let's go take a look as to why. As soon as I bring up the air, I can see that I'm limited to 32 virtual CPUs per node here, so we'll have to drop this to 32, but it still should be many enough to prove my point with Task Manager. Now with it set to 32, we'll boot it up and see if the system starts up. It looks like we're getting the uh, 
spinning wheel, so it looks like we're well on our way. And here we are finally at the desktop with 32 cores running. Let's see how it works. There are at least two things that make being a developer on the actual operating system somewhat unique. The first is that, unless you're a Mac developer, I suppose, everything needs to be backwards compatible. Code written properly in 1994 should still run perfectly today. The second is that there's an installed base of about a billion machines out there, and your code has to work on all of them, sight unseen. It's like you're building a bowl in a lab that's going to be released into a billion china shops that you've never seen before. If something's going to break anywhere, it will. Every line of code that you write that makes an assumption about how a machine is set up is effectively a bug because there will be an exception out there somewhere. The fact that Task Manager still runs and works almost 30 years later reflects pretty well on Task Manager itself, but it's also really a testament to the hard and careful work of thousands of engineers over the decades to keep Windows effectively 100% backwards compatible. If you follow the rules, your code will just work. And if you didn't, but you managed to sell a lot of copies anyway, the odds are that somebody like Raymond Chen will be faced with making your code work seamlessly anyway. Okay, and with that, we've now got a 32 core system to play with, and I'm also going to try one interesting experiment. Can the NT4 task manager still kill the Windows 11 task manager if both are running? Let's see how the NT4 code deals with a serious abundance of cores and memory. Okay, back in Windows 11, let's bring up the Windows 11 task manager, make sure everything's still working properly. As you can see, we've got individual graphs here. You can go to overall utilization, but we want to see the logical processors because that's the view we're going to use in the NT4 task manager. Now, to run the NT4 task manager, again, we'll need a command window. So we'll launch a command window as administrator, and we'll approve this prompt. We'll go into the NT4 folder where we stored it, and we'll launch task manager. Now, you'll see it comes up alongside, but there's some serious painting issues with it going on here. The graphs are a little narrow, and there's a lot of flicker. I will pause update so I don't trigger anybody's seizure disorder, and we'll take a look at the graphs here. They all seem to be rendering properly, but as you can tell, it's saved room for 32, but it's only drawing eight actual cores, so that's a bug. And every repaint, it seems to have trouble as it goes to draw the other 24 cores, and that causes flicker. So clearly, even though the CPUs are actually all properly grouped into a group of eight, where each bar will actually represent four CPUs, some of the dead space painting has a problem. Other than Flickr though, everything seems to work. Let's see if we can use the old task manager to kill the new task manager. Goodbye, new task manager. So the old task manager still has the cojones and power it takes to terminate the new task manager. As far as I can see, there are only two bugs that have been revealed by the passage of almost 30 years and the advances in the hardware that have come with it. The memory display overflows and the CPU graph flickers when there's more than eight CPU cores. If you enjoyed today's episode, I'd be honored if you'd consider subscribing to my channel and please turn on the bell notification icon. I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so please be sure to leave me one of each before you go today. And if you do have any interest in matters related to ASD or Asperger's, please check out the free sample of my book on Amazon, Secrets of the Autistic Millionaire. It's got nothing to do with money and everything to do with living a successful life on the spectrum. It's everything I know now that I wish I'd known back then. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. In the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. This little chair will be waiting for one of you, and a rocking chair for another who likes to rock, and a big armchair for two to curl up in. All next time on Dave's Garage. <laughs>